everybody doing so far? Good. 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 Awesome. Uh, we excited to learn about what's coming out in 6.4. Hopefully, hopefully you're all on the 6.3. <laughs> Running the latest stable. Um, I am Damon Cook. Let's see. Let's get this progressing. There we go. I am Damon Cook, a developer advocate with WP Engine. Um, I'm also a sponsored part-time contributor for through WP Engine. Yeah, here to talk about WordPress 6.4. Um, most of my slides, I have about 30 slides, and I think every single one has a video on it. And it's just, like, they're all under a minute short. They're just kind of a basic walkthrough of what I'm talking about, give you an overview. Um, but I just wanted to give you the heads up. And they all are downloaded, so even though I'm not on Wi-Fi, this should be working great. Um, a bit about WordPress 6.4. It's due to be released um, in November 7th, uh, given there's no hiccups. Um, it's the third major release of 2023, and it's actually the shortest release timeline, so there's a little less time to get uh, all the features and adjustments in, but uh, there's a lot of great stuff in here that we're going to go through today. And I suspect this is going to, I'll probably go through the slides pretty quickly. I want to leave a lot of room for questions at the end. And I'm also um, going to, if anybody has any things that they want to dig in specifically on, I can open up, a, I have a local instance that I can uh, step through some of the features if we want to look at them. This, uh, these, this upcoming release has uh, the, the versions of Gutenberg that it, it will include are listed here. Um, and it's using, uh, this is led by an under, underrepresented gender uh, squad, which is awesome. I think a round of applause for that, because I think we need more of that, definitely. Um, but a bit of a heads up, um, I did this presentation a week or two ago in Rochester, and the, a lot of the landscape is changing because this is all work that's being done as I speak for these releases. So some of these items have already shifted to the next version of 6.5. The font library was a, a kind of a major uh, feature um, that got pushed to 6.5. And I think uh, it's really close and they're still working on it, but um, it's gonna be a great feature. And then some other things, uh, time to read block, table of contents and the scrolling marquee, just some new blocks on the horizon that got uh, pushed to 6.5. And the interactivity API, it was actually merged, but um, it's not really publicly usable for developers yet. So that, that's gonna be uh, hopefully in 6.5 as well. Revisions to template and template parts and post formats. Uh, does there, anybody remember post formats? <laughs> anybody still using them? No, okay, well. They will maybe have another heyday and make a comeback. <laughs> um, and now we're getting into the video segment here where I want to show some of these features. Um, image for 6.4 coming out in November. The image light box is one of the new features. Um, here we're showing just uh, an image. Well, actually, it's a gallery block with images and um, each item you have the ability in the editor to toggle on this feature to uh, have the image overlay. And you also have the option uh, being shown here in the global style so you can enable it globally and then the user could, you could opt out on an individual basis on each image. Um, so you can take a either or approach, um, but it is an opt-in out of the box experience unless the, the theme explicitly uh, enables it. Um, so yeah, here's a, just a preview of adding images into a gallery and then, um, another feature I'll be talking about shortly is that you can see the little thumbnails on the list view, um, which give a little, uh, preview of what is being inserted. So you can kind of see, uh, where your uh, images are laying out. So that's image light box.
placeholder aspect ratios. Um, I apologize, I think this video came out a little blurry, but that's the only one, and I apologize. Um, this is a feature that should help uh, pattern and theme creators. Um, you can, if you're creating patterns, if you want to insert an image, but um, they might not have an image associated with it, you can set the aspect ratio. So once somebody inserts that pattern and goes to add uh, an image, it'll maintain that aspect ratio um, for the placeholder. So that's a really uh, nice quality of life for pattern developers. And also on all these slides, which I'll, I'll share the, the link at the end, I also have uh, these, you'll see these odd numbers. These are uh, links off to the tickets that um, relate to these features that were emerged. So if you want to read up a little bit more on the details of what goes into them, you can go there. Um, list view. So this is actually uh, impacts the group block. Um, you can now rename. Um, over in the sidebar, you can set custom names on the group block, which is just kind of a nice quality of life. Again, organizing if you want to rename things and keep things organized. If you're like a Figma user and want to name your layers and all that good stuff. Um, and there's two options. There's You can rename in the, the list view, but you can also rename, I think it's coming up in this preview, but you can rename over here in the side as well. And they sync up. Yeah, there's the, that's the sidebar there. Um, another group related and columns block related feature enhancement is the ability to set colors. It's just introducing more supports basically for more elements nested within a group and columns block. So you can set colors on buttons and headings. So um, it gives it a kind of context. So this is, again, another kind of a pattern. If you're a pattern creator, it helps set some context and style options to refine um, when a user inserts your pattern, what they, what they can do and, and change in it as far as colors. Uh, this relates to the group lock. Uh, you can, they've added background image support. Um, so you can sign previously, I mean, the cover block allows for greater flexibility of setting a background image, but it kind of has its own use cases, whereas the group block, it's a nice addition to have the background image. And this is kind of a first iteration. I'm sure there'll be, uh, I think there's already plans for two enha enhancements for this to set positioning or uh, scale of the image. Um, but that's a nice addition to the group block. And this actually slide uses the light box, so you can kind of see this in action. But this feature, um, another, uh, most, a lot of these items in 6.4 are um, just quality of life enhancements to add more supports for blocks that, you know, like the example of having colors available for nested heading elements, just kind of refining a lot of the features. Um, so this toolbar, the toolbar for the quote navigation and list block, um, previously, if you were editing a nested item, the toolbar kind of followed it around. Now it's attached to the top. So it became really problematic if you, you know, if you got down here to this bottom item and you're trying to edit that and the bar was kind of, and then you decided you want to go above and edit this one, the bar was in the way and it kind of was not a great use case, uh, user experience. So now it's captured to the top of the block itself. Vertical text orientation. This is something that a block theme has to opt into. Um, but you can change the orientation of your text, so you could do some interesting design uh, design choices. But um, I think there's still uh, more work to be done to uh, basically um, just 
take into account for different um, right, to uh, right to left languages. And yeah, well, I mean, this is great for languages that are up and down probably, but yeah, it's just kind of a nice style enhancement, but that has to be opted in through the block theme and the theme.json. Uh, and here's the little snippet that would go in there for writing mode. Um, in the navigation block, you can now add button elements, which is a nice addition, because um, previously, I think it just was link support. Um, so, yep, here's an example of just uh, inserting a button into your navigation. Um, and I kind of touched on this earlier, but in the side list view for gallery and images, you can see a little thumbnail now that uh, just gives you a visual uh, reinforcement of what images are attached to these items within the uh, editor. Um, and then I think these next few are related to the query block. Um, the pagination for the query loop block, so if you have you know, dozens of posts in your uh, query loop, you need pagination, obviously. And so now you can set the mid number for um, how many pages you're showing. So this is adjusting the query page number block, I believe it's called, um, which is a nice addition. And then the enhanced uh, pagination. Uh, so you can enable this so the page will not refresh should the user paginate to the next, uh, well, previous or next. Um, so this is a really nice, this is back to the good old days of Ajax. <laughs> um, but I think this also uses the, this is one of the new use cases for the interactivity API. Uh, for theme developers, um, in theme.json, there it already exists fluid typography support, but um, I think it was a common uh, complaint that users wanted to be able to set when the, the max and min uh, viewport width of when the, the fluid typography kicks in. So, um, like, for example, this... Uh, is saying between 800 and 600, the fluid typography would adjust from small to large. But at 800, that's where it would stop. It would not get any larger than that, which is not probably a very good use case, but it's just uh, showing an example of how you would use it in theme.json. Block hooks. Um, this is a pretty neat feature. Um, but it's in a very early iteration. I think there's gonna be a lot of follow-ups um, in probably minor releases after 6.4 to extend this functionality. This is for uh, block and plugin developers. Um, if you develop a custom block and you can say, you can hook it on or insert it um, anywhere in a template, template part, or a pattern, so say uh, you want to hook into, well, this example, um, the group block. There's verse, spacer, column, and group in this one. And you can, you can specify whether it's before or after. And then if, you, if, it's a, if you're at hooking into a block that has, allows for inner blocks or nested blocks, then you can say first child or last child, and it'll in, kind of insert it into that um, DOM, essentially, relative to that. Um, but there are some new filters that, to, the, the dev notes for this, which usually come out um, in the next week or two, will have a lot more information around this. So stay tuned on the developer blog on make.wordpress.org. Um, and there's also documentation here. Uh, for the block hooks, but there's it's still early for this, but I think it's going to have a lot of potential uh, to for extenders to use in the blocks. Uh, per block layout support, though this is again block theme authors 
you can specify whether um, blocks that support layout, whether you want to have it enabled or not. This is like, you know, um, a line wide, a line full. You can just disable it all together. So in this case, we're turning it off for buttons. So if somebody inserts buttons, they won't have the option to go wide or full. Uh, that's a nice enhancement for theme developers. And then the new theme, 2024. Um, these are some screenshots of the designs that came out of um, it. Uh, the new theme, you typically, um, we focus on one kind of topic for a new theme, but this one has uh, several different topics they're trying to address. Builders and writers, different use cases, artists, um, and then businesses. So there are different uh, designs and even full page layouts to account for that, which is really nice. And then back to video. Uh, this is just a video of showing some of the style variations for 2024. So you can change the colors um, and give it an overall aesthetic um, different view and set the fonts. Of course, the, the font library, well, that's not, that's not included in that, but you can change the fonts based on the theme that uh, includes it. And I can, uh, again, I can open that up later in uh, a local site if you want to see more of that. Uh, more quality of life enhancements. Um, open in the new tab, if you insert a link anywhere in a post or in the, the block editor and you wanted to open it in a new tab. I think this is a one or two less clicks to get there. Um, you can get a preview as well. So yeah, it's just uh, getting that checkbox to open in a new tab. Uh, a few of these for the list view, which is the sidebar on the, the left hand side. Um, the Escape key, which is a pretty common uh, shortcut, I guess, essentially. You select multiple items. Um, you want to use escape to deselect them. So that was added um, for the block, the list view. Again, list view, another shortcut. You can use the um, down here. What is that? Uh, command <laughs> control D. I think, um, to duplicate items in the list view. Um, this one's for, I guess, yeah, uh, block and plugin um, authors. You, there's a new use block editing mode, um, which allows you to specify um, three kind of different things for when a user inserts your block, you can have it um, disabled for editing mode or default, which is just what you, the default state that you want it in and uh, content only, which would uh, disable a lot of the color changes, uh, margin layout support, and just allow the editor to edit the content only. So this is a new hook for plugin authors and block user block writers to use, which is a great handy feature. Command palette. Is anybody using the command palette? <laughs> I had a feeling, yeah. Um, command palette, trying to make things quicker to get to. Um, if anybody's an Alfred user, I guess. Um, it's just kind of another way to navigate these different screens and jump around. Um, the, I know that there has been work to make it a little more responsive on smaller screens, and then there's been additions of uh, items to jump to, like in the post editor, post block editor. You can jump around and um, toggle on the sidebar list view, the block inspector, and insert blocks before and after has been added. Uh, here's the responsiveness for smaller screens. Uh, adjustments been made for that. Uh, patterns. Um, 
You can set custom categories now when you're creating patterns um, and then also synced and unsynced patterns uh, used to have kind of their own categories in the this side list uh, but now they're merged which kind of makes sense um, but you can see you can have your own set of patterns the user can have their own patterns and then the theme can also register patterns and they're categorized for you and then if you the user uh, creates a custom pattern, they can assign a custom category as well, which also makes it easier to find them when you go to insert them in the uh, block editor. Uh, you can import and export your patterns. They're JSON files. Uh, so this is just kind of a nice uh, way to migrate patterns from one site to another or share them. And then a list of just kind of a laundry list of Lots of other items that uh, I'm happy to touch on in, uh, yeah, in a little demo, I guess, if anybody, if there's anything that stands out to anybody. But really, um, that's all I have. I encourage you all to try to test. They're always looking for feedback. And the more testing we can get, the better. Um, there's some ways there's some links here on how to test and um, where to provide feedback even and I'll be around today and tomorrow and I'd be happy to to try to triage or create any tickets if you experience any bugs that you'd like to report um, and yeah just look for this tall guy in the yellow hat <laughs> and uh, I'd be happy to follow up on any of these features that we discussed today um, these slides are at Colorful Tones. If you just go to colorfultones.com, it's listed right on the front page uh, for all these slides. And I just want to give a huge th shout out to a lot of uh, Ann McCarthy um, of Automatic. She's a developer advocate. Actually, I think her role has changed, but she was a developer advocate. But her source of truth, um, she's been doing for the last few releases where she, because it's such a sh large shifting uh, landscape she keeps a, a document up to date of all the features so a lot of this a lot of the artifacts of the videos and imagery and information came from that source of truth so um, I just want to give a big shout out to Ann for all the work she does and this was created with the, the bounds theme and icon block and that's all I have but I want to leave lots of room for questions and demo if anybody wants to see anything any questions Hmm. That's a good question. So Yeah, sorry about that. He was asking if I'm yeah, let me repeat this back. Um Renaming the group block in the list view, which I can actually probably be easier to show. Um, he's asking if you hover over a renamed group block, does it show a tooltip of once it's right? Let's see. I mean, that's yeah. If it's been renamed, is there a tooltip to show that it would be? I, I would imagine it would say group block, right? Because you've already you see a, a a custom name, but you would want to know that it's actually a group lock. Uh, let's see. Going to go ahead and insert a group lock, and just put a paragraph in here. And we can. Go over here in the side and list view, rename, custom name, save, and I'm not seeing a tooltip, nope. Yeah, it still it still maintains the group uh, icon, but I don't know if that's a, a good enough visual indicator for most folks, but um, that is a great feedback, though. I, I think, you know, I think that 
it might exist, but it's not being surfaced in a way. So yeah, it would take some inspection, but ARIA label, oh yeah, it's got an ARIA label and described by, so that's interesting. Um, there may be, I would have to research, but there may be some tickets already to extend. I was also kind of referring to more like, uh, when you're scrolling through the page, not actually listening. Oh, okay. Kind of like, uh, you know, just something to indicate that this is a specific rename. Yeah, right. Over here in the editor itself. No, it just shows the... Yeah, instead of group, it would be like, okay, now that's a custom name. Right, so yeah. you get an actual notification on your... Right. Computer. Yeah, no, that, that isn't available here. Yeah, maybe that, that hover right there could show the custom name. But it is available over on the side here, so um, but it's kind of tucked away, so it's also available over here. Good question. Any other questions? Is there anything anybody wanted to see a little bit more of that I touched on or left off? <laughs> but this is in 6.4, I can demo. Sure. Um, yeah, that that I was actually exploring last week a lot, and um, I know that Nick Diego, developer advocate, automatic, full time sponsor, he's writing up the dev notes, which are supposed to come out next week. He just did a they just did a workshop around, and he touched a lot about um, block hooks, and that's on WordPress.tv. So I'd highly recommend checking that out. Um, but yeah, I think there's um, some more documentation to be surfaced around that, but it's gonna be, I think, potentially a very useful feature. There, there is, the current use cases being kicked around in exploration are, I know, the mini cart, like for Woo WooCommerce to say, you know, if a theme author wanted to say, make the mini cart available in the navigation, you could probably say, you know, in theory, you would say, um, last child, right? You just say, Mini cart, last child, and it would show up in the navigation. And the idea with also with block hooks is that it when because the theory is I guess like a plugin could write a custom block and have that block hook available. So you would enable a plugin and suddenly a block would appear, you know, like if it's the mini cart, it would appear at the end of the navigation, like the example I gave. But the, if the user has already customized like a template part, like that template, because that, that would typically go in the header. Um, so if the user had already customized that, that header, it would not actually insert itself because it recognizes and respects like user customizations. But it would still be available if they go into the site editor. Um, there's a little uh, UI for it. Um, it's like over on the side here. Actually, I think I have one enabled here. Yeah, I can show. Uh, it's a, the like button plugin, which is kind of the prototype for um, enabling this experience. So I have this, this is available. Uh, oh, there's some errors in there. <laughs> uh, this is a, I can't remember which contributor wrote this, but um, I think it was the author of the hook uh, feature. But let me find a post with comments. Yeah, I think I set one up here. So this plugin is using block hooks to insert this like button after, I think it's, yeah, it's after comment. Um, I might have the code, oh no, I don't have the code open anymore. Um, but yeah, that's kind of an example of one use case that they're kicking around. Um, but I think that there's already talks of being a little more um, explicit with the APIs, like saying um, maybe before, but also being contextually aware of um, maybe before, because in theory, somebody could say uh, before paragraph block, right? And you would see billions of blocks appear, but you want to be um, a little more explicit. You could say paragraph in a template header next to, you know, a navigation. That's probably a terrible example, but <laughs> you get where I'm going. Um, but th I think those already uh, discussions about extending that API for stuff like that. You have a follow-up? Yeah, so as a plugin developer, I could have 
proposed this, but when it was made to the forefront, and that the root farmers insert the rock into the cylinder, and then hand on the things were cooking through that probe, this rock was very much to be also at this after each of the rock that the forefront of the rock. Right. Yeah, no, I don't think that's. I mean, I don't think that's the initial kind of idea and use case. I think it's more of, or at least my interpretation is, yeah, you write a custom block and you say where you want that block to hook into. Um, so you would say before, yeah, navigation, if it's some kind of custom navigation block or something like that. But with that being said, like that, that's why I was saying like some of the documentation, there's some filters that are in this release of 6.4 that I haven't seen documentation around. And I know that's going to come out in the dev notes. So you can say, um, so if you were maybe a theme author and you installed a block that used block hooks and said, insert this block before a navigation and you wanted to kind of turn that off. I mean, yes, you could do it in the UI, but you can also use a filter and say, disable that, um, like in your, another plugin or a, in your theme. So that is the, the stuff that kind of needs to still be fleshed out. Um, so if you have use cases that you've, you're thinking of for block hooks, I'd love to hear them because I'm curious to hear more of what, I, I feel like I see the potential that I'm trying to also think of like, yeah specific use cases and that's where the the real details start to come out of like where will this go and, and we can give that feedback um to kind of drive that so uh, will we see as well and if you will um will there be any sort of bigger presentation uh this is uh that idea Oh, yes. So, so this example of this like block, um, if I go into edit site, uh, so now I'm in the site editor and I'm in a single template um, and we scroll down and if we click, we get into here and actually we got to, because I think, yeah, we're targeting this, this specific like button plugin is targeting, I think, the comment template. Yep, so there it is. So as a user or a builder, you could come in here and say, I don't like that, disable it and turn it off and that'll persist. And even if I had previously modified this template, like if I had done something else in here and said, you know, I don't like the comment date and remove that and then came and inserted or installed the like button plugin, it wouldn't insert itself there because it, the user's already customized it and opted to, to have their own experience. So, but they could still come over here and opt into it at that point. Sure. Yep. In the gallery the block, yep. is there a, an option to add the differences between uh, big resolution tablet and mobile resolution? To display, let's say, five on the big resolution and three on the tablet and only one mobile? Right, sorry, I'm not repeating the question I should and I apologize. Um, for the gallery block you're asking, is there an option to say, when you insert a gallery of images, say how many, like the layout based on the screen size. So maybe you want four images across on desktop and then two images stacked on mobile. Um, I don't believe that's possible. Um, you could do it with CSS and some theme, right? Yeah, no, I don't think that's um, currently, but let's, let's explore it real quick. I'm pretty sure I have a page, yeah, with a gallery in here. Yep, here's a gallery. Just want to make sure. Yep, we got the gallery selected. Um, yeah, so you can set columns over here for your gallery and the resolution of your images. Um, but kind of where the breakpoints are set are 
probably dictated by the block theme, so you'd have to do some, you could do some custom CSS or maybe some stuff in the theme.json to kind of account for that, of how you want um, different screen sizes. Well, like you have three uh, columns there, but the last two will split the, the, the width. Can we have a, uh, settings that keeps the grid and not uh, fill the remaining space? Right. In the last row? Um, yeah, so these last two images, since there's only two, it's just taking up the remaining space. And you're asking whether there's an option to say, don't take up the remaining space and stick to that. Right stick to the three columns. I don't think there is right now. Um, I've seen some explorations of grid, be, uh, CSS grid being incorporated in certain aspects, but it's not, no, I don't think it's currently available to say that in the gallery block, but I think it's a great feature and I would imagine there's already a ticket for it to, to explore that, so. Sure. How are we doing on time? Plenty of time, okay. Uh, any other questions or any features or things I can demo? Yep. Um, I see that you use Manta in Azure and not the Kedic. I have it. And I saw that you like just did the wrong text and that was kind of cool. Was there any other kind of thing like quick dealing with that you Oh. Uh, not to be confused, sorry, I have Alfred installed, which is like a system, a Mac, yeah, so I was doing that. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to confuse you. <laughs> but there, yeah, no, you can do, uh, is it Command K to bring up the command palette in WordPress, and then I could say, since I have uh, image for selected right now, I could say insert or after, oh, I forget I'm putting the forward slash. Uh, no, that's not, I wonder if that's not, because that's on one of add a gallery, you probably check this one. Yeah, add after, maybe, would be a good use case right there. And, um, if I didn't want to come down here and click this thing, or click enter, um, that's, I know, I know insert after and before were new commands that were added, so. Yeah, it's a useful tool. I use that in Alfred. That's why I was, <laughs> I use that all the time. Yeah, I think I saw somebody comment to that feature in a ticket for sure, because I think that would be, but I mean, the idea with command palette is to have the APIs available and then plugin authors could come in and, and like that would be a great plugin, uh, Lorem Ipsum generator plugin. So you're, if you're in the command palette, generate some more Mipsum and place it in the editor. Write it up. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think you would, I don't think you'd want to nest buttons. Yeah. No, um, yeah, no, I think I know. Um, that was just the navigation block. So um, you can add, let me show you, it's easier. <laughs> if I go into the site editor, And this is just opening up a custom template I built. And I'm going to open up the list view. It's a lot easier to kind of see where I'm going with this. So if I select the navigation block, um, the page, page list is already available in there. But we can say, actually, I think you have to. Yeah, detach that. Huh, yeah, I don't know where you, <laughs> let's see. 
I guess you have to select the navigation and edit. And then if we edit, we can say, I thought you would have been able to just insert the button itself, but I guess yeah, you have to, to switch the block transform, it seems, after you insert a link into the navigation to convert it into a block. But all the rest of these are just links. I mean, really, a button block is ultimately a link right now, but there are explorations of having the actual HTML button element available as well, so. Good question. Thank you, folks. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions or items we wanna go over. It's short and sweet today. <laughs> I'll be around today and tomorrow, and if there was any questions that you think of afterward, I'm happy to uh, open up my demo site and step through anything, and yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I use that for this presentation, and there's a lot of work that I still want to be done on that, <laughs> but um, thanks. Thanks.